today I want to do a pass to do a little bit of cleanup on the init function for the operating system layer. I wrote one in an earlier session and I've been expanding it, but I never really intentionally designed it. It was just something I needed for other stuff to get working. But there's a couple of issues with init and I want to also add a command line handling feature that's kind of tied in with how init works. So that's what we're going to work on. On Windows, there are actually two different entry points that are common to use, and I want to leave it up to the user which one they're going to use so that they can just write their code normally and I don't have to take over the entry point or something. But I still want to control in it and make it as tight and almost automatic as possible. I also want to change how init works slightly depending on which entry point is being used since the arguments to that entry point are a little different in each case. So I'm trying an experiment in this one where I think I'll be able to uh, solve this and leave the entry point itself in the hands of the user, but still make OS in it as dialed in as I want it to be. Since this is an experiment, we'll have to keep an eye on how it goes down the line. I'm adding this command line feature to the operating system layer for a couple of reasons. First is I want to use the same string list type that I use everywhere else in the code base for handling my argument parsing code later on. And the second reason is that as programs get larger, I tend to find that the part of the program or parts of the program that care about the command line arguments get spread out and find themselves farther and farther from the entry point. So because that's going to happen, I want to preemptively get ahead of that and not have to pipe through the command line arguments to all the places that are going to care about it and instead just say that there's going to be a way to grab the command line arguments from anywhere in the code base without having to pass context through or anything to get to it. And that way, uh, the way I'm going to achieve that is by making it a call in the operating system layer. The idea here for addressing the problem with win main and the init path is that Whenever a user is writing code that is directly using WinMain as an entry point, we can pretty much assume that they're going to have the Win32 backend available to them. So we'll just put a specialized call for initializing the operating system layer into that backend that you can call if you happen to know you're using that backend. It's not abstracted, so it's not in the OS namespace. Instead, it's in the W32 namespace. But I figure as long as we're not putting anything useful into the W32 namespace that we would like to reuse when we're not in that namespace, like when we're compiling for Linux, for instance, then it's probably fine. We don't want to end up with lots and lots of effort going into building features on top of things that aren't super portable, but having a few where it's helpful might be good. The downside to this setup might be that we aren't abstracting how the entry point looks now, so the same application on Windows and Linux is going to have to have slightly differently defined entry points, and I haven't done anything to abstract that. I haven't tried this approach before, uh, so I'm not sure if I'm going to like it better or not. So we're going to have to keep an eye on how that feels when we start having this, this come up more often. But for now, I think it's kind of neat looking. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going with it and we'll evaluate it again next time there's a chance. Anyway, that's it for now. See you later.